Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the devotion of Jesus to the will, law, and person of his Heavenly Father. Today, a related topic, the humility of Jesus. For let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men, and in habit found as a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 5-8 Jesus knew his own value better than anyone, but he accepted a humiliating and painful death because he knew that it was the way to bring about the salvation of souls, which was God's main objective. To obey God's will, therefore, he needed to submit to many bad things, including his own death, in order to achieve a great good for us. Not only that, he knew what was going to happen to him in advance and still accepted it. And going a little further, he fell upon his face, praying and saying, My father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew twenty six thirty nine. Jesus prayed this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane before being taken to be falsely accused by the chief priests and Pharisees who would then demand his crucifixion from Pilate. The phrase, this chalice, refers to his suffering and death. Jesus is asking for a way of doing the will of God without his torture and crucifixion if possible, but even so he accepts God's will, even if there is no escaping his fate. Because of his humility, he knows that obeying God's will is always the right thing to do, even if it means giving up his life. Like Jesus, we can and probably will want to escape from suffering, but we should be willing to endure it if it's God's will. However, it wasn't just bad things that Jesus submitted to. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan, unto John, to be baptized by him. But John stayed him, saying, I ought to be baptized by thee. How comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said to him, Suffer it to be so now, for so it becometh us to fulfill all justice. Then he suffered him. Matthew three thirteen to 16 Suffer in this verse means tolerate. Baptism was a good thing, calling people to repentance and to re-examine the way they live their lives, but literally no one was worthy to baptize Jesus. When John points this out, Jesus doesn't argue the point. Instead, he implies that in spite of this, it should still be done. Jesus submits to baptism voluntarily, putting aside the question of what will bring him the most glory and would later make a sacrament out of it, which everyone would need to be saved. By submitting to this ritual, Jesus demonstrates another thing that each of us should do, submitting ourselves humbly to whatever sacraments or other rituals that God requires of us. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written that he hath given his angels charge over thee. And in their hand shall they bear thee up, lest perhaps thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Matthew 4, 5-7 Finally, we see Jesus insisting that people shouldn't try to manipulate God through temptation and trickery. He recognizes the perfect goodness of God's choices, and deliberately endangering himself to try to make God react isn't the act of a humble person trying to do what's right. There's a time and a place for more direct interactions with God. The salvation of souls comes first. These are the ways in which the humility of Jesus can be seen in his relationship with God. We also see the humility of Jesus in his prayer life, which will bring us into the topic of the next episode. Next... The Prayer Life of Jesus 
That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.